Coming up on today's edition of Channel 97 News. We take a look at the impact of sleep. Explore our local business. And check out what people are thankful for. And it all starts now. Welcome to the November edition of Channel 97 News for the 24-25 school year. I'm Addie Scott. And I'm Blake Bronick, and here are some announcements for the month. Juniors, check your email or counseling Google Classroom to select a formal assessment for our April 8th testing date. If you do not select an assessment by December 1st, one will be decided for you. If you have any questions, please contact Ms. Madami. AP exam final date before the price increase was November 8th. Any AP exam purchased now, March 7th, will be $140. Have any questions, see Ms. Badami. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas, especially for the children of the Annie Malone Crisis Center. The Black Student Union is hosting a toy and gift drive. All donations can be dropped off in room 325. Thanks for your support. NHS will be selling candy grams during all lunches on Tuesday, December 3rd through Friday, December 6th. Send a candy cane and a note to anybody in the building only for a dollar. Additional bundles are available for $2 and $4. Candy grams will be distributed during a and on December 17th. The library will be closed for testing December 6th through December 12th. Loaner laptops and student printer will still be available. The a and testing center will be in room 233A on Monday, December 9th. Boys golf meetings start up in January and February. Any questions, contact Coach Gerdes. In our first story, we take a look at the background of a big community at Oakville. Dino and Adam introduce us to some families from Bosnia. Many people may know that there is a lot of Bosnian culture and history throughout St. Louis, but why is that? Mrs. Sakota and a few students teach us more about Bosnia. So the war, when we left um, Bosnia, it was 1992, um, which is about when it began, when it all began. Um, and at that time, only my mom and I were allowed to leave. My dad had to stay um, because there was like a rule, any, any man over 18 had to stay. Um, and then, um, so we just had, like my parents had to just pick up and leave. My grandparents ended up staying though, um, cause it was more convenient for them to stay instead of like picking up and leaving at that part in their life. But my parents were young enough where they could move over to Germany. Um, it took a long time for my parents. It took about like 20 years. It wasn't like right away. It was a perfect life. They had to live at my grandma's house for years and years. And eventually when they got both good jobs, they had me and my sister. And then we just got a successful life. So when they first came here, um, the International Institute um, St. Louis helped um, with like finding um, you know, everyone needs a doctor, helping you find a doctor, helping you find a job, helping you find, um, my parents took some classes to like learn English. Um, and then when I came, when we moved over here in 97, I was um, five years old, almost six. Um, so that August I started first grade. My dad started off as a bus boy. And the thing is they missed out on four years of high school. So they weren't able to go back until senior year. And then my mom and my dad had both went to community college to get degrees. My mom became an assistant doctor. She began to also like work in ta taxes, financing, and all that kind of stuff. And my dad was a truck driver. And he began to start his own business and it just went on from there for lack of a better word, like I was really Americanized, I guess, um, when I was young. And so it was pretty easy because everything in my life, like, you know, you turn on the TV, it's American TV. So everything's in English and um, everywhere you go, everyone is speaking English. So it was like, I don't think it was difficult at all, at all to like connect with the American culture. Uh, I never appreciated like the culture as much, but whenever my parents would explain to me what they had to go through and just like what Bosnia is all about, I just appreciate it so much more. With Adam Winter behind the camera, I'm Dino Solyanovic with Channel 97 News. It's fascinating to hear their stories on something that changed so many lives. 
Something else that has a major impact on humans is sleep. Avery and Parker have a story. Sleep is super important for students' health, but how does lack of sleep affect them? Um, I think uh, from just a general perspective, if students aren't getting enough sleep, um, from a cognitive standpoint, they're not performing um, at their greatest capacity. Um, they aren't able to process information quickly. Um, they're not able to um, consolidate memories over time. Um, so then they become kind of impaired with regards to the way that they are able to respond, act, think within the classroom. But why do students prioritize grades over getting enough sleep at night? Um, I think that our, our culture just in general is very designed to like chase the grade when rather it probably should be that we get more sleep then therefore we can be more efficient at our studying practices. How does Nurse Nana Camp help students who need some extra sleep during the day? We usually try to give them between five and ten minutes nap if they you know have a headache um, or they just didn't get any sleep during the night but we try to limit it to brief little naps. I think it helps them just to kind of um, because studies show that short little naps can definitely help with retention and um, any kind of academic performance. So I think it helps just to kind of get a little brain break. Um, I think it's important for students to understand that getting on a schedule as much as possible um, and regulating that schedule as much as possible is really important. You're wanting, as far as an adolescent is concerned, anywhere between seven to nine hours is probably an ideal time frame and range. Um, I just think that sleep is extremely important. Um, I think from a physical standpoint, you know, if we are wanting to work out and make sure that our bodies are fueled appropriately and get strong, especially if we're um, you know, an athlete, that sleep is more important or just as important as our diet and our nutrition. Now, if we're thinking about that performance here within the classroom, same thing. Sleep is equally as important as consuming the right foods and then also studying because you know, we're trying to get that perfect mix that perfect mix then can lead to, to better performance. With Avery Klumpers behind the camera, I'm Parker Wyatt with Channel 97 News. While getting enough sleep is critical for our health, it is also essential when tackling new responsibilities. Speaking of new responsibilities, last year we welcomed Dr. Hogg to our district as our superintendent. Sarah catches up after Dr. Hogg's first year. Last year, the Melville School District welcomed a new superintendent. I met with Dr. Hogg for a follow-up. My first year superintendent, I could not have been happier with it. Everything turned out, you know, you have your daily challenges, but just everything about it was cool from getting to know the kids, getting to know the community, uh, getting to know our schools. But really we did two things. One, we implemented professional learning communities uh, and you could, it was neat to watch the staff grow with that. And then secondly, we raised scores, our MAP scores, our EOC scores, and we raised our APR. So those are the things I'm most proud about. We had a couple big decisions to make last year. Uh, one was with, we had 34 interventionists and the funding for them was going to run out. So we were able to keep 19, but that was a long process. Uh, it involved staffing, it involved people changing buildings and that's never easy. The second was we had an at home program that we had to close. We were losing a million dollars a year on that. That wasn't an easy, easy decision either because it impacted kids. You never want to negatively impact kids, but we needed to, we needed to close that. My first year was amazing. Uh, I was, I felt so welcomed by the community. This is just such a great place to be. Uh, you know, we have 10,000 kids at 19 buildings. That's a lot, but you get a sense of belonging in each one, a sense of feeling. And the more you can connect kids to school and their buildings, the better. Dr. Hogg is the right superintendent for where we are right now in our district. And I think our community really wanted a visible leader and Dr. Hogg has been at so many events. He's been a constant presence. And I think our school community has really appreciated that. So keeping that positive momentum going and trying to make the student experiences as best as possible is our goal, and I hope we're able to keep that good momentum going. I can't wait to see what Dr. Hogg does next. For Channel 97 News, I'm Sarah Brand. It's great to see how the year went since Dr. Hogg stepped up to fill such an important role. Some of those students from the National Spanish Honor Society have also stepped up to help run the Spanish Club. Adam and Dom have the story. This year, Spanish National Honor Society students are volunteering to lead Spanish Club. This has sparked a positive change in the Oakville Spanish community. Um, for Spanish Club this year, students in National Spanish Honor Society 
are um, volunteering their time to kind of set up a mini lesson to teach the kids in Spanish Club. Um, so my students, National Spanish Honor Society, will choose a topic and um, kind of make a mini lesson so that they can teach the students the Spanish Club because Spanish Club is more um, open to everyone, whereas National Spanish Honor Society is a specific um, GPA, their participation in Spanish class, all that sort of thing. So far, I think it's worked really well. We've only had, um, I guess, one meeting where a National Spanish Honor Society group um, led the Spanish Club meeting, um, and I think it went really well. Um, I think it's really um, eye-opening to see Spanish Honor Society working with Spanish Club, because Spanish Honor Society, there are requirements to get in. So I think um, underclassmen going into Spanish club, if they're in a Spanish class, seeing that they could get into that um, makes them want to go into more Spanish classes even more. So sometimes we would just do like games or we would just do like presentations or information sessions about um, particular cultural things, depending on what time of year it is. Maybe it might be seasonal. Sometimes it's just a general meeting, but yeah. Um, I think the students really like it and it's really cool to see them like enjoying the activities that their peers are leading or their their upperclassmen peers are leading. Uh, just come by Spanish Club. It's fun. I'm Adam Wiederman with Dominic McEntee for Channel 97 News. Their new changes seem to be going very well. Another place expecting changes in our community is the local Burger King. Gwen and Zoe take a look how Burger King's remodeling affects its employees. You may have noticed the Burger King on Telegraph is closed. Let's hear from the students who work there. First day was nerve-wracking, like, because, you know, new building, a lot of people, I don't know. But, like, I got pretty used to, used to it the first day, and then, like, now it's just, like, regular work again. I used to only have to drive, like, seven minutes, eight minutes to work. Now I have to, like, now it's a 14-minute drive. I feel like the way just our store did things was a lot different. We have to learn how they're doing things. They only have one window at their store, so we have a cashing out window and like a food window, and they have only one. Everything's like in different places there, so you gotta learn where everything is pretty much. Um, I just can't wait till our store is built back up. There's front line and back line. Front line is like taking orders, drive through. And then backline is making the food, and me and him are both up in front line. And it's expediting, which is putting up stuff in the back. So. Yeah. Some people, I guess, quit. Um, quit. Or they are on like a leave, and like they're just waiting until the new store is done mm -hmm. being built. It's definitely a different environment. There's a lot more, yeah. lot more people there. Yeah. It's a lot busier at that store, too. I think it's just like a more popular area. I mean, just be on the lookout yeah. for the new Burger King on Telegraph. It's going to be great. Revamp. With Zoe Simro behind the camera, I'm Gwen Johnson for Channel 97 News. If you're looking for a new food place to try while Burger King is closed, Cafe Fleur de Lis may be the perfect place. Abby, Ethan, and Brendan give us a review on the food from the cafe. I'm Brendan. I'm Ethan. And I'm Abby. And today on Channel 97 News, we will be testing food from Cafe Fleur de Lis. I have a waffle and a blueberry muffin. I have an egg and cheese crepe. And I have an apple butter cinnamon crepe. First, we're going to be trying the apple cinnamon mm. <laughs> mm -mm. <laughs> What are your thir first thoughts, Abby? I'm going to have to give it three stars out of five. I'm going to go two stars out of five. I'm gonna have to go with a one out of five. I, I wanna change mine. I actually give it a one now. I didn't know oh. what you were being mean. Okay. Okay, now for the cheese and egg crepe. I give that one a three. I'm gonna go with four. Yeah. I'll give it a three. Okay, 3.5 average. I say that's pretty good. Next, we'll be trying the waffles. This one's much better than anything else. I'd give it a four out of five. Five out of five. Five out of five. Best one yet. Next, we have the muffin.
What's your favorite? Uh huh. That's a five out of five. Yeah! I'll be really think about it. That's gonna have to be a four. The blueberry taste is too strong. I agree with Abby. Four out of five. It's too strong on blueberries. Okay. <laughs> I have the chocolate. My. Okay. Cause where's the camera? At? <laughs> <laughs> what do you rate it out of ten? It's cold. Yeah, it's been sitting out for a while. While the cafe offers a variety of delightful food, it's a reminder how food can bring people together. As we approach the season of giving thanks, many are reflecting on what truly matters most. Here's Tiger Walking with Will and Emma. My name is William. And I'm Emma. And this is Tiger Walking. That's good. There's people coming. What are you thankful for? Uh, my family. Your family? Yeah, that's a good one. Um, I'm thankful for uh, Fortnite. Fortnite? That's a great one. That's a great one. What are you thankful for, my man? This guy right here. Mm -hmm. This guy right here? Mm -hmm. uh, okay, let's, let's see what he has to say. Let's see what he has to say. What are you thankful for, my man? I'm thankful for my beautiful mustache and beard. There you go. He does have a beautiful beard. Mmm. Mmm, some, cre some creative people at this lunch. What are you thankful for? My family. I'm thankful for my friends and family. Okay. What are you thankful for? Uh, I'm thankful for the orange chicken at lunch. <laughs> what are you thankful for? Um, food. The school bus home. Okay. Um, getting a 10% off at Marshall's. Oh, there, you're <laughs> surreal for that. What are you thankful for? It's my birthday. <laughs> It's heartwarming to see what OHS students are thankful for. That concludes our November edition of Channel 97 News. I'm Blake Bronnett. And I'm Addie Scott. And remember, Oakville, keep, keep your, your eyes, eyes on, on the tiger. tiger. Welcome to the November... Oh. Look here, look here. What is this wording? Why is Blake so loud?